My name is Luann Bumgardner, and I have my colleague Ed O'Donnell, who is going to be handling the chat and the Q&A for us during our webinar today. And um, so this webinar is going to, during this webinar, I'm going to talk to you about how you can um, use the new Classflow desktop. And it can be used offline and take your Active Inspire flip charts and convert them into Classflow lessons. So the new Classflow desktop is actually going to be available come Saturday, February 25th. So we're getting a little bit of a preview on the new Classflow desktop. So it's, that's pretty exciting. And um, so let's go ahead and dive in. We'll go ahead and minimize that. And let's just minimize that for the moment. All right. So if any of you are currently uh, the Classflow users, you may know that you can, within Classflow, convert your flip charts into Classflow lessons using the convert button within my resources. However, if you are Classflow desktop users, you might know that you cannot convert your flip charts into Classflow lessons using Classflow Desktop. Well, now you can. So using the new Classflow Desktop, we can actually convert our Active Inspire flip charts into Classflow lessons. So let me show you the new Classflow Desktop. So you may be looking at my screen going, okay, where's Classflow Desktop? You know, you don't see, see it. This right here is our new Classflow Desktop. So you can see we have completely changed the look of Classflow Desktop. It's just this circle here, and if I want to move it, I can click anywhere inside of this black area and click and drag, and I can move my Classflow desktop icon um, anywhere onto my desktop. If I click the menu, which we call the hamburger menu, um, I can click on that, and I can open up my wheel, and I have all my different tools for Classflow desktop. Now, since we're talking about how we can um, use Active Inspire with new Classflow Desktop, I'm not going to go through all the different tools here. Um, talking about Classflow Desktop, we actually have another webinar um, that will speak to that. We have a, a webinar called the new Classflow Desktop, which you can join and learn all about the new Classflow Desktop. This one I'm going to focus on just those um, how to go from Active Inspire to Classflow Desktop. So um, what I would like to do is actually I'm going to convert a flip chart. And so I would like to show you that flip chart first within Active Inspire. So I'm going to show you Active Inspire here real quick. So I have this Pearl Harbor flip chart. I'm just going to kind of flip through those flip chart pages real quick. And just so you can get an idea of what the flip chart looks like as a flip chart. So that when I convert it, you can see um, how well everything comes over. All right. Well, this wonderful, lovely little flip chart. All right. So I'm going to minimize that. Now I'm going to bring my Classflow desktop back up here. And I really like it how it's just it's very small and it doesn't take up my screen now with the new look of Classflow desktop. So now let's convert my flip chart. So I'm going to open up my menu. And to convert Classflow, my flip chart, I'm going to click on this icon here, which we call the Browse. And um, I notice I have some options here. I can create a new flip chart, new uh, Classflow lesson. I can browse my computer because I can save these um, Classflow lessons onto my computer, or I can convert a file. Um, and I would also like to point out um, I am working offline. I'm not connected to the internet at the moment. Obviously, I'm connected doing my webinar, but I'm not through Classflow Desktop. So I'm going to click on my file to convert, and I'm going to choose my Pearl Harbor flip chart. I'll thank my computer for knowing right where to go. And I'm going to click Open, and it's preparing my data, and it's taking my flip chart and converting it into a Classflow lesson. So now while Classflow Desktop is working its magic, um, I know we we're talking about Active Inspire flip charts, but just so you know, um, Classflow Desktop can also convert smart notebooks and Adobe PDF files and convert those into Classflow lessons as well. So if you have any of those types of files you would also like to use and convert, you can, you can do that just as easily. All right, so I'm going to move that icon over here. So now here we are. I'm in the new Classflow Desktop Lesson Builder. Um, you will notice it has a little bit of a different look within than Classflow did. You're going to notice 
Um, we have a new version of Classflow coming out on Saturday as well. You're going to notice a very similar look within Classflow also. And one of the first things that I notice is when I used to teach and I use my Active Inspire flip charts, I use page notes all the time. I always had page notes with my Active Inspire flip charts because if I didn't use those page notes, I would open up my flip charts the next year and wonder, you know, what the heck was I doing? I, and I really needed those page notes for myself. And also, if I was to share them with my colleagues, um, then, or with other teachers, then I would know, um, you know, I'd have more instructions on there. So, the first thing that I notice are my card notes down here with an Active Inspire are showing. So, my page notes come over when I import and convert my flip chart. So, super excited about that. Now, card notes, you may notice, are showing in a different location. So, our card notes are actually showing at the bottom of the um, class flow card. And I can click these three dots and I can scooch it up and make it larger or smaller if I want to have more uh, show more information as far as the card notes go. I can actually hit this arrow here and I can hide my card notes if I want to and I can show, it, show them again if I want as well. So I know this is very similar to PowerPoint, so if you're PowerPoint users, um, this may seem very familiar to you as well. So I'm going to hide my card notes for now to give myself more room and to show you some different things. All right, so now let's just kind of flip through the, and my um, Classflow cards just so you can see the new con newly converted flip chart into the Classflow lesson. And you'll notice things came over really well. Um, I may move my text up here just a smidge. That looks great. All right, let's go to a different card. Um, super happy with the way everything has turned out here. I'm not really seeing a lot of other tweaking that I may need to do. Um, just really like how everything has turned out. All right. So, again, you can just see that everything has turned out great. So, just really, really happy with the way the flip chart has come over. All right. And again, I am working offline. I'm going to probably say it out a few times, but I want to make sure everyone understands that the new Classflow desktop, I am working offline um, at the moment. Yes, we can end up connecting to our Classflow accounts online, but that's not what I'm doing today. Um, I am remaining offline today. All right. So now that I have my newly created Classflow lesson, what's really nice, I want to add some of my Classflow features into my, into my new lesson. So I can actually add cards if I would like to. So I'm going to click here and I can, notice I can add a card, a section. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a card. And um, let's say if I want to add an image to my, to my card. I can click this insert button right here and it's going to take me directly into my computer files. And move this, oh my webinar information is getting in the way there, so hopefully you can see everything okay. But I can take me directly into my, um, let's say to, if I went to my desktop or wherever I might be, and I can find any file onto image or any other thing that I might have on my computer that I might want to add into my uh, classroom lesson into here. So I have, if I have an image that I want to add to my classroom lesson that's on my computer, I can easily do that through that insert button which, again, I really like. So I'm going to add this map. I'm going to click open, and there. There we go. Now I have my map in here. And I can click and drag, and I can resize it. And now I have my map here. So that's, you know, nice and easy to add. If I wanted to um, add another card here, I could do that. So I have another nice new card. So now with this card here, I just want to take a minute and show you some of the features within Lesson Builder of Classflow. Not necessarily things that didn't go with my current lesson, but I just want to show you some of the different things here. So within Lesson Builder, we have shapes. Now, of course, we had shapes before. You could add shapes um, within Lesson Builder, uh, but we have really improved those shapes. So if I click on, let's say, my triangle tool, I click there on my triangle, and notice it just pops the triangle onto my page. And I can click and drag and I can resize it, which is really nice. And I don't have to draw the shape onto my page any longer. I just click on the shape that I like. And I want to 
speech bubble, and I had that shape onto my card, which is just a lot nicer. We had a lot of feedback from teachers saying that they would prefer shapes to be that way when you wanted to add shapes to cards. So we really listened to your feedback and we made those adjustments. So now that I have my shape on my card, I can do other things with it. I can change the color. I can change the fill color. I can change the border color. I can change the border style. So notice here, I now have some options that I can use with my shape. If I click off of my shape, those options go away. If I click on it again, I see those options. So I can change my fill color of my shape and I can, let's see, I'll make it this color. And I can also change the opacity and change that for the fill. I could change the border color and make that whatever color I want and change the opacity there, which might be a little hard to see since it's a thinner line, but I could go here and change my border width and make it really thick if I would like. And I have border styles that I can choose from and just some different things. And I could change the opacity of the entire shape itself. So just showing you some different options there that you could use with your shape if you'd like. Now, I'm gonna click on the cog and you'll notice here we have edit points. So if, again, if you were familiar with Active Inspire, we had edit shape points where we could change the shape, um, the look of different shapes. If I click here, we have edit points where I can take now my shape points and I can change the look of my shape. Maybe I want to make that a right triangle. Um, I could, but I could just click and drag and change my shape. I could click here again. I could stop editing. Um, and I could do that. Now, it depends on the shape. Some not, the edit shape is not available on all shapes. It just depends. If I click on the cog here, you'll notice I don't have that option because it's not available on the speech bubble. So it just depends on the shape, but um, if you click that, you may see edit points options. Another um, feature, I'll just use my speech bubble here, we do have this edit rotation pivot. Now, you're going to see this on most objects. Um, not just shapes, but you're going to see it on most objects, um, even with images. And if I click here, I now have this um, rotation pivot, and I can take this and change where I want the object to rotate. So if I click here, just to use this, my, my triangle as, a, uh, as an example, and I click the green and I rotate it, it rotates about its own center because that's what all objects are going to do by default. So if I change my rotation pivot point here and I rotate my speech bubble now, it'll rotate about that point there. So you have that option that you can change. And what's really nice too is that I actually can take this and move it wherever I want. I'm not limited to only rotate it wherever the object might sit. So you can actually move it to be anywhere on the card. All right. So let's move these things out of the way here a little bit. Let's jump to the text tool. So with text, you're not going to notice a lot of differences in the text tool. We really haven't added anything here. Um, however, you will notice that we have made some improvements to the text tool. So now let's see if I, uh, welcome to the webinar. It hasn't improved my spelling either. All right, so now if I say welcome to, my, to the webinar and I click on the text tool again, notice it saved my font size. So we've made those improvements. Again, we had a lot of feedback from teachers saying, you know what, I'm tired of always having to change my font size. Every time I click on it, I have to change my font size. Of course, we listened um, and, and made those changes as well. Um, so happy typing. All right, so we did have those improvements. So we have the, the pen tool. So if I click on the pen tool, you can choose between pen or highlighter. We have changed a little bit on um, how the pen tool functions. So we have pen or highlighter, I'll leave my option to pen. Now, similar to the shape tool, I can make some option changes down here. I can change my pen color. Notice we have a nice, a much larger color palette, which you may have noticed when I was um, with the shape tool there, and I can choose a different color 
um, for my pencil and I can write. Now I'm on my computer trackpad, so you may have to bear with me here. Um, I'm not a very good writer with that, but I can do that. I can change my pen width and make things a little bit thicker. And I could also have some drawing styles. So freehand is the default. That's the way we've always been drawing. But now we have more options where we can draw straight horizontal lines or vertical lines, which is super nice. So if I go here to my highlighter tool, and um, let's see, I'll leave that as that nice color. And I'll change to the horizontal line. And let's change my pen width to stick since I'm on the highlighter. And I can draw a nice horizontal line. So what's really nice about this is I'm really bad at drawing nice horizontal lines, but if I am with my students and I wanted to highlight some text, I could use a horizontal line then to draw highlight some text with my students using the highlighter. And um, you know, I'm not all over the place if I'm trying to highlight text. I can use that horizontal line and do that. Um, someone else suggested to me just the other day um, that we could even draw um, um, a chart. Couldn't think of what I was trying to say there. Um, if you wanted, to, oops, sorry, didn't give that quite enough love there. There we go. Um, I could even use it to draw a chart. I'm going to go back to freehand just so the next time I go use my pen tool, I can use it the way I'd like. All right, so if I go to my eraser tool, um, we do have the thickness with the eraser tool. And again, you have the same drawing style with the eraser tool as well. And I can just click and drag and I could use my eraser tool. Um, so with the other tools here, we have our toolbox. I can click here and I have my toolbox. And I'm actually going to jump over here to my map tool just because I have um, maybe an actual usage here um, where I could maybe add one some of these tools. So if I go to my toolbox here, I could add maybe a compass tool if I would like. Um, I could click you know, and add those. Or I could, what I'm really thinking is add my spotlight tool. So I could click here and add my spotlight tool. And I could click and drag this square, and I could click inside of it and move it around. And so if I was delivering this to my students, then I could maybe focus their attention. We could talk about the different shifts that we see here on this, on this map. All right, I'm going to jump back to my page here. Um, we've also added the camera tool. If I click the camera tool, I can use the camera tool to um, take an image. Um, to do that. And um, actually, I'm going to add a card here to that. So if I wanted to use the camera tool, I could use it to take a picture, which I won't do. Or I could actually use that to upload an image. Oh, that's a nice uh, still frame we have there. Um, you're welcome. I'll go ahead and get that off there. And I could upload my image that way as well. Oh, I think I clicked on the wrong one. But anyways. All right. So going back to the clear tool here. So I could actually clear off my objects. I could clear off my annotations. So you notice we have some different um, options this way. I could clear my annotations. Before we, that's all we could do. You could clear all. Clearing annotations, that was it. Now I can clear my annotations. I could clear shapes. I could clear text. Um, just to clear off those object types, I'm going to hit undo to bring my lovely um, things back. And I could clear all. So if I wanted to, I could just clear everything off my page. So we've made those options, changed for those options as well. All right. Oh, I got rid of my, my page. All right. My added page when I was hitting my undo, I'll have to go back to that. All right, so if I hit my fill tool, um, I'll just real quick to talk about the fill tool. This is a new tool. So um, if you're thinking to yourself, I never saw the fill tool before, you would be right. But it is a new tool. Um, it is obviously a tool you would have seen in Active Inspire. It is a new tool with Classflow Desktop, and you will see it again in Classflow Online um, coming up this weekend with the new release. So if I click here, I can change my fill color to be, uh, oh, let's go with um, any color we'd like here. Let's see. I'll go with a dark blue, I guess. And notice my cursor now looks like the fill tool. If I click on the page, I can change that. Um, I'm going to hit undo because it just does not look very nice. And I can actually even click and change the fill color of my shapes. Um, and if I get it right, I can change the border color of my shapes as well using the fill tool. So if you wanted to change your page colors, um, you can now using the fill tool. 
which that's something we're, we're pretty excited about. I'm going to go back and select my, my select tool so I don't um, change a bunch of uh, punch the color of a bunch of pages within my within my uh, my new flip chart or excuse me my new class lesson here. Um, Ed, do we have any questions in the chat or Q and A at the moment? Uh, we don't right now. Um, just a reminder, everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q and A, and we'll get them answered for you. All right, wonderful. Yes, please feel free to do that. Add them in there. All right, I'm going to add another page because I accidentally un hit undo too many times. I got rid of my additional page. All right, so I want to add my my image back in there because I, because I didn't. A little bit of a user error. All right, so let me add my image in here, and I'm going to add another shape. So I'm going to click on my shape, and I'm going to add uh, an arrow. Didn't click on that right either. There we go. Here's my arrow. All right. I'm going to change my color a little bit here because I would like for it to be nice and bright so we can see it. That's great. And I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And so, again, if you have come from Active Inspire, you may have used Actions in Active Inspire. So Classflow Desktop now has actions that you can use within Classflow Desktop. And if I click on the cog here, I can click on Actions. And it will open up my Add and Edit Actions window. And I can click and I can do a Show Hide, I can do a Reorder, Drag and Drop Container. I'm actually going to do a Clone on Drag. And I'm going to hit Save. And now once I've done that, it now has this little icon here that tells me it has an action attached to it. Now, I'm in Builder, so the action is not going to work right now. Um, it won't work until I play my lesson, but it does let me know that it, it is there. Now with my image here, I can I'm going to click on the cog. I have some anchor options. So anchor, you may think of lock with Active Inspire. So if I was to anchor, oops, if I was to anchor movement, that would be like lock in Active Inspire, where I can't move the object any longer. Anchor resize is going to make it so it can't be resized. So if you were to, to send something to the student devices, um, if you were if you were online and you were to send something to student devices, it would make it so they, if they were on their devices, they couldn't resize it when they moved it. Um, and obviously, anchor rotate. Anchor all means it's going to anchor all of these things. It can't be moved, it can't be resized, and can't rotate. So um, I'll hit anchor all for this one. And now I have this little anchor icon on this, this um, image just letting me know that it has um, an anchor, um, the anchor has been set to it. So I'm actually going to make it a little bigger. And again, the reason I can't resize it right now is because I'm in Builder and I'm not playing the lesson. All right. So um, I think I've hit everything that I wanted to talk to you about real quick. And I'm actually going to delete this page since um, I'm just deleting it by hitting the cog, by the way, and hitting delete, because that was just my play page. And I would like to start here, and I'm going to play the lesson, so I want to show you what it would look like if you were to play it in your front of classroom. So when I hit play, again, I'm offline. I'm just delivering this to my students. And I can hit the next page, and I can use my Spotlight tool, and I can make it larger, Oops. and I can go through if I wanted to do that way. If I go to this card here, I have my drag and drop where I can drag out these. Maybe if I wanted my students to point out different worships, or excuse me, warplanes, um, different things. And again, I can just kind of go through the, the flip chart that way. All right. So just to kind of show you there um, some of the different things. You know, again, I'm not going to flip through all of it. Um, here are my card notes. If I, I wanted to see my card notes, I could click here and I could even see my card notes, should you want to do that. So, you know, that would be a, just a good way of taking your Active Inspire flip chart, converting it into a class flow lesson. Um, super easy just by clicking that convert button. So I'm going to exit out of here. Um, now, if you wanted to save this, you can save this by just clicking save. 
um, and it will save it. Now, it will save your um, Glassflow lesson wherever, in the same place, wherever it grabs your um, the flip chart. So wherever my, my flip chart was on my desktop, I'll just go here to show you. On my desktop, I had my Pearl Harbor lesson. It has saved my, here's my new Pearl Harbor class of lesson, and it will save it as a .cfl file. Now, that's because it saved it there because I hit save. Um, and let me, um, I'll make some changes here. Let me add, click on this one. I'll add a, uh, a lovely, a lovely bit of annotation. Now, when I go to exit, it wants to know if I want to save. So I'm going to hit save as, um, just to let you know, it doesn't always do that. So if I didn't hit this save, it would prompt me to save as, so it, you can choose where you would like this to be saved. Um, and um, of course, I could choose to save it wherever I would like. I'll just put it on my desktop, not in my, that folder, but just in my desktop. And it will always save it as a .cfl file. Um, so here it is, and I can, um, I have my folder there. Now, oh, one thing I did, actually, I completely forgot to mention. Um, so I'm gonna actually go back to my browse here, and I can open my flip chart. Oh, sorry, I keep seeing flip chart. I'm, I'm too much of this active inspired to class flow. I'm gonna get tongue tied. So I'm gonna open up my class flow lesson. I can do it right from there since it was a newly, a recent, a recent lesson. You can actually also um, put any class flow activities that you may have created into your lesson. So if I could just to show you here, if I go to that browse um, and I hit create new, you can create new lessons or activities um, with Classflow Desktop. So any of the 10 activities that you can currently create within Classflow, you can now create offline um, using Classflow Desktop. And I actually had created one ahead of time that I meant to place in this lesson and um, I forgot to show you. So let me just show you now. So I'm gonna actually add another card, because um, as you may know, activities do like to have their own card. They're a little stingy. They don't like to share anything else on the card with them. So I'm on a blank card and I go to insert, um, and I have placed it in my Pearl Harbor folder. Now notice this is a .cfa file. CFA A for activity, where the CFL is L for lesson. So I click here and click open, and it will bring in my uh, classical activity. Now, if I was to play this to my students, I could, we could play the, uh, the word search. And I have these different, um, you know, we, we could play the word search here. We won't, I won't obviously go through all of these, but just to kind of give you an idea. All right? So I didn't want to forget to say about the activities, which I almost forgot to do, which could have just been a travesty. All right. So I'm going to exit again. It's asking me if I want to save some of these changes. I'll just hit save now, um, and it will just save over top of the one that I already had. All right. So one of the last things I want to talk to you about, um, again, with Active Inspire, I know it was something very popular. I know I did a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of class with, um, Active Inspire training in my years at Promethean, and one of the uh, favorite seem to be um, desktop annotation, so where people like to annotate over top of desktop. So I think for those of you who did that, you're really gonna like the classical desktop version of that, um, probably a lot better than the Active Inspire version. So I'm gonna click and open up my wheel here. Um, this icon here is our desktop annotate icon. Now, what it's going to do when I click on it, it's going to take a snapshot of whatever is showing on my desktop and put it into an instant whiteboard lesson. So you might be thinking, what is she talking about? So let me just do it so I can show you. So I'm gonna click on this icon and what it's done, see now it's taken a snapshot of my desktop and it's put it into an instant whiteboard lesson. So this is not a live desktop. And I know it isn't because I can see I have, let me move this out of your, my way a little bit here. I have tools showing here. 
I have these tools showing here. And, um, and with those tools, I can, I can write, um, I can erase, and I have my erase yourself, and I have my clear tool. I'm just going to hit clear all. Um, I can add shapes. Um, I even have a text recognition. So if I was to try, and again, I'm on my mouse, my trackpad, so bear with me a little bit here, see if this will work. And if I wanted to hit my text selector, and I can click and drag around here, and after a second, it'll take my text, and it says hi. And I did, I did give it a little extra dot there at the end. So we have some extra things. So if I wanted to highlight some stuff with my students, I could say, hey, click on my highlighter. Hey, I want you to work on these images here. Um, I could throw in my protractor. So some different things here. So now if I wanted to get out of this desktop, it all I'll do is click on that icon again. I'm back to my normal desktop. And I could go to my, um, I could go to my, in my web browser. And I could click on this again, and I'm back into my desktop annotate. So if you recall with um, Active Inspire, if you were to annotate, and we move this out of our way so we don't get confused, I was to annotate over something, and I've seen this happen many times, and I said, okay, let's focus on this page here. You then, if you were to scroll down on the page, that annotation would stay there. And I've had so many teachers complain, but I want it to stay there. I want to print this out for my students, or I want to save this for my students. How can I do that? I was like, well, it's kind of a process. You know, you'd have to take a camera shot. You may have to save this or that. You know, it just was, it was quite the process. So now we don't have to worry about that. I could add shapes. Um, you know, we could do whatever we would like. Um, so, just some little things here with this class with desktop. I'm pretty excited about this. So now, if I hit this carousel here, toggle carousel, I can actually delete cards. I can add cards. So if you're in the middle of this instant whiteboard lesson, we call it now, I can add a blank card or I can delete cards. So, and this is right in the middle again of your instant whiteboard uh, lesson. And if I hit this again, it takes me out of there. So you could do this over top of a PowerPoint. You could do it over a video, a Word document, PDF. I realize you can bring PDF and turn it into classical lessons, but just to let you know, we can do this over anything. Um, so super excited about this new feature um, that we can do with, with this desktop annotation um, through Classical Desktop. I think it's uh, such a hugely improved um, class uh, desktop annotation than, than it was with, with Active Inspire. So I definitely wanted to show you that as well. Um, Ed, do we have any other questions within the chat or Q&A? Yeah, we had one question about um, covering converting Active Inspire flip charts into classical lessons. Um, would you mind just reviewing that one more time? Sure. So I'm just going to minimize this so we can see. So if you wanted to convert a Active Inspire flip chart into a Classo lesson, um, once Classo desktop is open, and this is my Classo desktop icon here, um, and this is what the um, icon would look like on your desktop, is what's showing down here. Once it's open, this is it. Um, I click on the menu here, and I'm going to go to this browse right here. Oh, this is the browse. I click on that, and then I click Convert File to Lesson. Find the file that I want, and I'll just, since I was in Pearl Harbor before, I'll just choose that again. It's nice and handy. And I'll click Open, and then it just converts it into a classical lesson. That's it. And just so everyone knows, um, everyone will get a recording of this, so you'll have all the steps available to you. We have also put together um, classical lessons and PDF files that kind of go through some of these steps also, and we're going to place them in the marketplace. Um, they'll probably in, be in there by um, sometimes either Saturday or Sunday, um, once all the updates have been completed. Um, and you can just do a search for um, a classical desktop or um, the new, new classical, and those things will, will pop up for you. Um, 
and so you'll have, you'll have them. And they're for both Classroom Desktop and for what's new in, in Classflow as well. Um, any other questions, Ed? Uh, nope, that was it. All right. Um, so if, and if, it, what I would like for you to do, if you all wouldn't mind, um, I'm actually going to exit this and I'm not going to save this one since I have a couple of these floating around. Um, and again, we do have a, um, another webinar called um, the new Classical Desktop that really kind of talks about everything that you can do um, within this, the new wheel. Um, but one of the things you can do, you actually can um, link to your Classflow account. Um, so, and the only reason I'm doing that is because I would like for, if, if you could, to log in for me um, to do a survey. Um, so, if I can remember my password. All right, maybe I won't do that. I'll just go to this one. All right, because I'm logged in already. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, let me try this one more time. Come on, you're being a little grumpy on me here. All right, I'm already logged in over here. I think that's why it's yelling at me a little bit. All right, so what I would like for you to do, I just wanted to do it this way so I could show it to you. All right, what I would like for you to do, if you wouldn't mind, um, is actually, um, I gotta get out of here anyway, is if you could, if you could go to demo.classflow.com slash student, um, so it's demo.classflow.com slash student, and then um, it's going to ask you to join the class, and the class is QQQPW, and um, bear with me because I actually am, um, need to log into that one. I'm trying to be clever, and, I, and, and obviously I wasn't. So if you could go to demo.classflow.com slash student and just hit this join class and do this Q and ask for a class code and put QQQPW um, and then it will ask you to enter your name and you can just type in your name and click join anyway for me and I'm going to, I'm on my way over. Give me one quick, oh I was putting the wrong password in, I just realized that's why I wasn't connecting. I was putting this password in. Too many class flow accounts. Tisk tisk. I'm coming, my lovelies. All right. There we are. QQQPW. If you could log in for, I have one person logged in. Thank you so much. The teacher has joined the student. Thank you. Sometimes it's just one of those days. All right. So and the reason I want you to do that, um, I'm going to share. Um, some things with you and I'd like for you to, if you wouldn't mind, if you have time to do this um, evaluation for me real quick. We'd just like to get your feedback to see what you think of the, of the webinar. Um, all right, so demo.com, demo.classo.com slash students. Um, and if you could put in your name, all right. So what are your next steps? So if you don't have a Classflow account, Certainly, please do um, sign up for your FAFSA account. If anyone is having trouble signing in, please let Ed know through the chat and he will walk you through that. Um, so if you don't have a FAFSA account, they are free. Please do that at FAFSA.com or FAFSA.co.uk if you are across the pond. Um, recommend everyone to do that. We will send everyone a email that has a recording of this webinar, as well as a playlist of help videos that are relevant to the, this webinar session. Um, if you would like to know what our upcoming webinars are, you can find that out at um, classflow.com slash events, which you should be seeing um, maybe on your own device, I hope. It should be, should be seeing that card coming to you. 
um, but just so that um, you know where to find it later if you want, it is classo.com slash events, and you can re register for any of those upcoming webinars. We have a lot of new stuff coming up, so we have what's new with Classo is going to be coming up because that is also changing this weekend. Obviously, I've been talking a lot about Classo Desktop, so we're going to have, you know, what's new with Classo Desktop. Um, uh, also, a whole new getting started with Classo um, that is going to talk about it with the new Classo Desktop, so that's all coming up. We would love for you to be social with us. We do a lot of tweets. Um, we're big into, in the Twitter Twitterverse. Um, my personal um, Twitter handle is ActiveBG. You can follow me if you'd like, and please, of course, like us on Facebook. Um, we do a lot of Facebook Lives and Periscope events also, and they just are quick little five minutes um, where we just kind of give you some class flow tips on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you can follow us so you can see those events as well. Um, we have one tonight, I believe, on Periscope. So if you're on Twitter, follow us. You can definitely uh, check that out. All right. Um, so I, I want to send this to you. You should have a form showing on your device. If you could fill that out, I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the chat. Um, Ed and I will stick around and make sure that we answer any questions that you may have. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it, and we will definitely get this webinar out to you as well as the help videos. Um, Share with your friends, get them excited. We are really excited about this new Classflow desktop. Um, a lot of good stuff coming out. So thank you all for joining us, and please enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.